Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Nielsen. I'd like to talk to you today about six types of headache and differentiate them for our help as a discussion. Number one, a cervicogenic or neck related or generated headache. Number two, a blood sugar or thyroid type headache. Number three, a migraine type headache. Number four, vascular fragility or protein escape headache. Number five, a cluster headache. And number six, frontal sinus or sinusitis related headache. So many people suffer from headaches and headaches really are not normal. So often I have a patient that comes in and says, I've had normal headaches like once a day, once a week, once a month. And that really is unacceptable. Head pain and headaches really should not exist. When we look at the differentiation of headaches, the first headache that we think of is the headache that comes on as the day progresses. This is typically the headache where you feel tension in the back of the head, comes forward to the eye, and typically timing occurs in the afternoon or as the day progresses. Usually the hallmark of this headache is that it's resolved by rest. This is called a cervicogenic headache or a neck generated headache. And typically the correction is simply a chiropractic adjustment or some type of a physical therapy modality. The second type of headache I'd like to discuss is a blood sugar imbalance or a thyroid headache. This is differentiated typically by a headache that you wake up with. AM headaches that are relieved by eating are typically a blood sugar headache. That means then that during the night when you're fasting or sleeping, because your body isn't able to take in the food, the normal endocrine mechanisms are not occurring. So we need to look at adrenal glands and then again thyroid. Thyroid headaches also are AM headaches that you have daily or frequently awaken with an AM headache. The third type of headache I'd like to discuss are migraine headaches. A lot of people experience migraine episodes. Some people have migraine headaches that have the aura, visual spots, numbness in the side of the face, numbness in the tongue, numbness in the extremity, sensitivity to sound, sensitivity to light, and then actually the headache begins. Some people suffer these types of headaches for several days or even weeks. And the migraine headache is really associated with a change in blood flow in the brain. So as we look at the migraine headache, really we need to determine is this migraine related to, in the female, a hormone menstrual cycle associated with estrogen dominance and a problem with liver function? Is it associated with a past traumatic injury to the head or to the brain? Is it a change in brain sensitivity in a specific region called the thalamus that then gates the information associated with eye intake and ear intake or ear inputs that now can't balance that and now we get a spreading what we call the polarization in the brain. Migraine headaches really need to be looked at closely because typically there's some type of imbalance that's occurring that we need to restore. A lot of people use magnesium and others have used valerian and butcher's broom to treat these because it is a circulatory type of a presentation in the brain that doesn't allow oxygen to get back to the brain cells to allow that appropriate metabolic function or threshold to be maintained. The next type of headache that I'd like to discuss, number four, is the specific headache that actually is associated with a daily timing that's very predictable and a specific area of the brain. This headache really is differentiated still from the cluster type of a headache but is like a cluster in that it has a very specific timing. A lot of people experience these headaches where in the daytime it comes in a specific area of the brain and it comes on at a specific time. This headache is usually associated with weakness or fragility of the blood vessels in the brain, allowing increased permeability where then proteins that actually escape into or outside, excuse me, of the blood vessel, and that generates pain. So we usually look at some type of a rutin, R-U-T-I-N based product that helps to strengthen or restore the blood vessel integrity and then keeps the proteins from being so permeable or escaping the blood vessels so easily, creating then that irritation in the brain. 
those often are also associated, that type of headache, with increased permeability in the gut. So leaky gut syndromes, uh, food sensitivities, we really need to analyze or evaluate that type of a headache. The cluster headache specifically is the headache that a lot of people experience that is this timing headache that they'll describe as they just wish they could just put their head in a vice. They'll actually hit their head against the wall or the floor. This is again something that we look at that typically is seasonal. So a lot of people will say I experience cluster headaches in the fall or it seems like every fall or every spring I get this headache. So with that we really need to evaluate environmental type sensitivities. Springtime, spring allergies, fall time, fall allergies and looking again at that response in the brain that may be being triggered by some type of an external stressor that's actually giving us a window into an imbalance in an endocrine response or a sensitivity response. Specifically in this case, hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal, and spleen. So those organs are what we're really looking at with the cluster type headache. The last headache I'd like to discuss today is the sinus type headache. A lot of people experience sinus headaches and these are typically the pressure over the sinuses above the eyes, below the eyes, and often will give pain into the teeth. People experience pain in the teeth because the nerve receptors that go project upward are right there at the sinus level. And sinus pressure will actually put pressure back against the nerves that give innervation to the roots of the teeth. When we look at sinus headaches, it's very easily differentiated by leaning forward to tie your shoe or to pick something up. The pressure will actually increase. And chronic sinusitis is most commonly caused by a yeast or a fungal infection. In fact, 94 to 96% of chronic sinusitis and therefore sinus headaches are linked to fungus and yeast infections. When we look at that, a lot of people think allergies and end up using a lot of antihistamine type drugs. The reality is these sinus headaches are commonly linked to a gut pathology, meaning some type of dysbiosis or inappropriate growth in the tummy like bacterial overgrowths and fungal or yeast overgrowths. Analysis of the tummy, correction of the environment of the tummy, and restoration then of appropriate bacterial balances allow the tummy then to reduce the inflammation in the system thus reducing in the sinuses the mucus that's produced. In fact your stomach actually produces in your GI system about eight cups of mucus a day whereas your sinuses will produce approximately a half cup to even a cup of phlegm for a lot of people with post nasal drip. If those areas are inflamed enough it will actually wall off or block the drainage of the mucus flow and give them that really tight pressure. I'm Dr. Nielsen. I hope that this headache discussion is a help to you and your family.